Everybody, God bless you online. Praise the name of Jesus. Everybody say, in its proper time. John chapter 12 and verse 20. I'm going to move through this. We'll catch up on podcasts and other teachings to help reinforce the teaching. John chapter 12 and verse 20. You need to know that this season, um, Passover season, is really critical for your understanding on so many levels. From forgiveness to how God works in the earth, God's processes to bring into what God has got for you. Father, help me this morning. Holy Spirit, as I make sounds, you make sense, but anoint these lips of clay. I'm following your leading. Thank you for the anointing in Jesus' name. Everybody said, Amen. Amen. Now there were certain Greeks among those who came up to worship at the feast. So you know the feast is Passover. The season has come. And God is, Jesus is in the earth for 33 years. And every year you come up for the feast. Every year. And dealing with things in its proper time. And this particular feast is going to be like no other. People thinking it's still normal. But God had another plan. And you now need to see the context of this and see why this is written because this season was like no other. God is about to change it and God is about to set things in place. That our lives would never be the same again because the dispensation was about to shift. Then they came to Philip who was from Bethsaida of Galilee and asked him saying, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip came and told Andrew, and he turned Andrew and Philip told Jesus. But Jesus answered them saying, Wow. Wow. The hour has come. I remember Jesus' mother saying, He's telling his mother, My hour has not yet come. My time has not yet come. And she thrust him in, into a different time. This time he acknowledges my hour has come. The hour has come that the Son of Man should be glorified. Next verse. Most assuredly I say to you, he now gives an explanation that is so of that if you read this you might miss it as a Christian. Most assuredly I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the ground and dies, it remains alone. But if he dies... It produces much grain. He who loves his life will lose it. And he who hates his life in this world will keep it. And he who hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. If anyone serves me, let him follow me. And where I am, there my servant will be also. That's important. That where I am, there my servant will be also. If anyone serves me, him my father will honor. Now my soul is troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour. But for this purpose... I came to this hour. I please want you to pay attention. A born again believer, most people, when the Lord says, do not, when the Bible says, do not conform, but be transformed in the re- renewing of your mind, it means that God's got a, com- a completely different system to bless you. That as a born again believer, your life Your time is in his hands and it is completely different to the world. Now, if you don't follow the order, you can be born again and miss your destiny. Miss the reason why you're here. Miss the purpose for your existence. Misunderstand Jesus. Don't understand why he came. 
Here's the one thing that I believe that most Christians need to be taught on. Most have been taught how to sow. Few have been taught how to reap. Most people don't know what that reaping season looks like. When, when you speak to a, a normal, a, a born-again believer, and you speak to them about the different times with God, you, they would think that you're speaking heresy. Because do you understand that God's timetable is not your timetable? We say that. Give me, give me Exodus chapter 12 and verse 1. I want to show you that God's timetable and calendar in the earth is completely different to ours. We've been governed by worldly systems and they set the pace of what life should look like. The devil wants to set the pace so that you come to the ages of 70, 80, and 90, you've accomplished nothing for the kingdom of God. But how easy that Jesus had 33 years and he said, it's better that I go. Most people are looking for long life so they can have long disobedience. <laughs> you know, speaking about the elders getting, being ordained in the church. And others would say like, look, I've been long in the church. I'm like, you didn't get a clicks card, rewards card. That depending upon long service, you get some award. No, you've been long disobedient. We're looking for fruit. That's for another day. I want you to understand the timing of God because if you understand this and you bring your life into the timing of God, you will never miss what God has got for you. You will understand how to deal with times and seasons. You know that in Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 4, that to everything, uh, 3 verse 1, to everything is a season, a time for every purpose under heaven. But have a look at God's timing. So they were not a people. They were in bondage for 430 years. First Passover. We celebrate every year. First Passover took place. Takes place. And this is what God does. He says this month, now, I don't care what month it is for the world. He says, this month shall be your beginning of months. You don't, you don't, you, you, you don't go, go with a, a Gregorian calendar. You have a Hebraic calendar. You are on God's timetable. And most Christians have never switched calendars. They don't understand what birthing seasons look like. That in every season when God gives you a brand new start, Oh, no, first of, you know, 31st of December I was in church. How much change, change took place? This month shall be your, don't worry about them, your beginning of months. You belong to me now. I've got a calendar. I've got a timetable. And I've got things in place that I want to do in the earth. And I want you to know that you belong to me. It shall be the first month of the year to you. Speak to all the congregation of Israel saying on the 10th of this month, every man shall take for himself a lamb according to the house of his father, a lamb for a household. And if the household is too small for the lamb, let him and his neighbor next to his house take it according to the number of the persons, according to each man's need. You shall make your count for the lamb. And of course, without blemish and the like, we'll go through it next week. But he's trying to, well, God didn't try to, he did. We need to catch up with his calendar and his timetable. Time table. So, when you understand how God works, there is a calendar and God's got an agenda. I want you to understand this, please. So, you're not going to miss what God has got for you in the season. Because you're operating in time and all you know is when is month end. And you come under pressure and you, put, and you think you can put God under pressure because of your month end. And God's not caught up with your month end. God has got his own timetable and he's working his own thing. He knows you need of these things. But he's calling you to come onto his agenda. He's got a, he's got a timetable. He's got a, got a calendar. And he's got, he's got angels reinforcing that. Give me Daniel chapter 4. Daniel chapter 4 verse 4. There's a king by the name of Nebuchadnezzar. He's a crazy nut. And he is governing his house and he's flourishing. And 
the way they operated is that they've, they, they went and they conquered um, Daniel and his brothers are the, the, the top. He brings them. Babylon now cap- captures them, brings them into the house. Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they're serving in the, in the king's palace. And uh, this king is crazy. He, he has a dream. He says, you need to tell me what I dreamt and its interpretation. Others will kill you and your family. They said, you're crazy. Give us the dream. We'll give you the interpretation. He said, no, it doesn't work like that. I'm going to kill you. That's where Daniel steps in. Daniel says, look, just tell the king to stop. Then he has another dream. This is what you need to pick up. So Daniel's available. Here's the, the, here's the dream. Now, I want you to understand that God's got an agenda in the earth. And His agenda is not waiting on you. All of heaven is dealing with God's agenda. You're 70, 80 years on the earth and disobedience or whatever it is you want to do. And when I feel like going to church, when I feel like serving God, that things don't work in the heavens. Because God is busy, busy with His timetable. And He's not even, if you don't want to go, no problem. God's got things in place. Let me show you this, read this to you, and then we can move forward. So I, Nebuchadnezzar, was at rest in my house and flourishing in my palace. I saw a dream which made me afraid, and the thoughts on my bed and the visions of my head troubled me. Therefore, I issued a decree to bring in all the wise men of Babylon before me, that they might make known to me the interpretation of the dream. Then the magicians, the astrologers, the Chaldeans, soothsayers came in and I told them the dream, but they did not make known to me the, its interpretation. But at last Daniel came before me, his name is Belshazzar, according to the name of my God in him, uh, in him is the spirit of the holy God. And I told the dream before him saying, Belshazzar, chief of the magicians, because I know that the spirit of the holy God is in you and no secret troubles you. Explain to me the visions of my dream that I have seen and its interpretation. These were the visions of my head while on my bed. I was looking and behold, a tree in the midst of the earth and its height was great. The tree grew and became strong. Its height reached to the heavens and it could be seen to the ends of all the earth. Its leaves were lovely, its fruit abundant and, its, and in it was food for all. The beasts of the field found shade under it. The birds of the heavens dwelt in its branches and all flesh was fed from it. I saw in the visions of my head, uh, of my head while on my bed and there was a, a watcher. What is a watcher? A watcher is not a watchman. A watcher is an angel. They hold God's clock. They're only concerned with God's timetable in the earth. You as a born again believer should know that. It is important that you understand when watchers are busy with a family, with a church, with a city, with a nation. You don't have ordinary time like everybody else. You're on a different clock and because God operates what? In times and seasons. Because to everything there is a season, a time for every purpose under heaven. So God has got his own watch. So this king is doing great. But all of a sudden, here comes the watcher. And this angel is standing with a watch. He's basically got a watch in his hand. And he's saying, I saw, here's a watcher, a holy one coming down from heaven. He cried aloud and and said thus, chop down the tree and cut off its branches, strip it of its leaves and scatter its fruit. Let the beast get out from under it and the birds from its branches. Nevertheless, leave the stump and its roots in the earth bound with a band of iron and bronze in the tender grass of the field. Let it be wet with the dew of the heaven of heaven, and let him graze with the beasts on the grass of the, uh, of the earth. Let his heart be changed from that of a man. Let him be given the heart of a beast and let seven times pass over him. This decision is by the decree of the that there are angels walking around with watches in their hand and saying, your time's up. Your time's up. And the sentence by the word of the holy ones in order. God has got these watches in the earth because man wouldn't respond to God. He says, well, then I'll have the, the, the watches come in the earth and they're going to set the clock to bring order. In order that the living may know 
that the most I rules in the kingdom of men, that God can change kings, he can, he can, he can uproot a king, he can plant others. That the most I rules in the kingdom of men, and he gives it to whomever he will, and sets over it the lowest of men. This dream I, King Nebuchadnezzar, have seen. Now you, Daniel, Belshazzar, declare its interpretation, since all the wise men of my kingdom are not able to make known to me the interpretation. But you are able, for the spirit of the holy God is in you. My God. You're going to pray for your president. You're going to pray for the ANC. You cannot rule like that and think that all of heaven doesn't respond. Verse 19, then Daniel, whose name was Belshazzar, was astonished for a time and his thoughts troubled him. So the king spoke and said, Belshazzar, do not let the dream of its interpretation or its interpretation trouble you. So Daniel says, my Lord, may the dream concern those who hate you and its interpretation concern your enemies. The tree that you saw, so he's got to tell him the truth, which grew and became strong, whose height reached to the heavens, which could, not be, which could be seen by all the earth whose leaves were lovely and his fruit abundant, in which was food for all, under which the beasts of the field, field dwelt and, and the birds and the like. Verse 22 says, It's you, O king. You've grown and become strong. It's you, O ANC. For your greatness has grown and reaches to its heavens and your dominion to the end of the earth. And inasmuch as the king saw a watcher, an angel, a holy one coming down from heaven and saying, chop down the tree and destroy it, but leave its stump and roots in the earth, bound with a band of iron and bronze in the tender grass of the field. Let it be wet with the dew of the heavens. Let him graze until seven times pass over him. Please move. This is the interpretation, O king. This is the decree of the Most High, which has come upon my Lord to the king. They shall drive you from men. Your dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field. And they shall make you eat grass like oxen. And they shall wet you with the dew of the heaven. And the seven times pass over you. Till you know. You will not reign until Jesus comes. You will know. That the most High rules in the kingdom of men. And gives it to whomever he chooses. And inasmuch as they gave the command to leave the stump and the roots of the tree, your kingdom shall be assured to you after you come to know, after you acknowledge that there is a king, that, he that heaven rules. You need to learn how to acknowledge God in all of your ways. I don't care how great your business is. I don't care how, how strong it looks like. I'm letting you know that there is a God and there are watchers in the earth. And I felt it this morning when I woke up. The Lord said to me, son, the watchers are working. I'm letting somebody know this morning, the watchers are working. They're looking over the work that you do. They're looking at the things that you have been involved in. They're looking at your responses. The watchers are working right now. You've got to hear this apostle. I am letting you know by the Spirit of the Lord that the things are happening in the atmosphere that many people are not aware of. They are uncertain about how they, they think it's normal time. Therefore, King, let my advice be acceptable to you. Break off your sins by being righteous and your iniquities by showing mercy to the poor. Perhaps there may be a lengthening of your prosperity. All this came upon King Nebuchadnezzar. Now watch this. I want, you to, I want to read this finished. At the end of the 12 months, he was talking, he was walking about the royal palace of Babylon. The king spoke saying, Is not this great Babylon that I have built for a royal dwelling by my mighty power and for the honor of my majesty? While the word was still in the king's mouth, a voice fell from heaven. King Nebuchadnezzar, to you it is spoken. The kingdom has departed from you. And they shall drive you from men, and your dwelling shall be the beasts of the field. They shall make you eat grass like oxen, and seven times shall pass over you, until you know that the Most High rules in the kingdom of men, and it gives to whomever he wishes. So he turns into a beast, and he starts to eat the grass, like an animal. One who is so strong. And God shows him that if he, until he acknowledges the king of glory, he says, I'll leave the stump in the ground. If you acknowledge it, we can restore this tree. 
And the, if you read the rest of the scripture, you'll find how Daniel had to go through the time because while he was going through his struggle, the watchers were there. We're waiting for seven times, seven years. This thing must pass over you. You will look like an animal and the rest of the people will mock you. Because when the watchers get involved in a thing, they set things straight. They bring order into people's lives. They bring order into nations. You are so quiet. That very hour the word was fulfilled concerning Nebuchadnezzar. He was driven from men and ate grass like, like oxen. And he started getting feathers and his nails like bird scrolls. And at the end of time, I never recognized, I lifted my eyes to heaven and my understanding returned to me. May that be the testimony of South Africa. May this be your testimony this, in this season, that your understanding will come to you. I'm going to honor God in all my doings. I'm going to acknowledge him in all my ways. These people think that they can take over and, and bring uh, rule men the way they, they're ruling men, destroy people's lives. I'm letting you know that God is changing the story. Across the globe, things are going to change. I believe the watchers are working right now. And they're going to bring the change that we need in this nation and over your family and over our lives. I believe with all of my heart that something is happening in the atmosphere. That when you understand the power of how God works in time. And that you will begin to acknowledge that there is a God in heaven who rules in the affairs of men. Nebuchadnezzar lifted my eyes to heaven and my understanding returned to me and I blessed the Most High and praised and honored Him who lives forever for His dominion is an everlasting dominion and His kingdom is from generation to generation. And so then He got restored as He honors God and puts things straight. So here's where I want us to go this morning. I want you to know that there are watchers that are involved. I want you to know that God's not operating on your timetable. He's not concerned about your 25th of March. And the, the pressure that you put him in under. He's not under pressure for you. What God is doing is working in, there's three things that he's dealing with. If you look at Jesus and his time and your time in the earth, when you get saved, when he chooses you, and now you are born again, you now must in your mind understand that I'm on a different timetable. So there are three time zones that we speak about. The first one is Kronos. It is now 17 minutes past 10. On the 25th of March. You are dealing, when God takes you, He puts you into Kronos. Please hear me now. Kronos is, uh, let me go through this and lay it out for you so that I can just be kind through all of this minutes. Holy Ghost, you're going to help me, you know. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay, so Kronos is chronological, sequential, and it's linear. Measured by units of time, seconds, minutes, and hours. It's clock time. It's earthly time. It's the general process of time. There is something else called Kairos. A Kairos time is the set time. It's an appointed time. It's the proper time. It's a divine appointment. It's also an opportune time. A critical time, and I please want you to know that, write that down. It's a critical time. When you're dealing with a Kairos moment, uh, it's a crucial time, a strategic time. It's a convergence of eternity and time. It's also the unfolding of God's plans and purposes in the earth. So Kairos is a little different. Well, it is completely different. Maybe not. In that, you can be in time and you are serving God. Your chronos time, God measures. He marks it. He looks at how you handle things when nothing supernatural is happening in your life. Chronos time is how you serve when nobody's applauding you and there's no breakthrough even though you've been falling after God for so many years. 
and you wake up still in the morning with the right attitude and you put on that song, you don't have the husband yet, you don't have that breakthrough yet, you're still dealing with a thyroid issue, you're still dealing with no money in your bank account, but you're getting to church because in Kronos time, God's looking at everything about your life, your attitude, your mind, how you deal with the Lord, how you deal with His people, how you deal with your prayer time, even though I don't feel anything. I am in Kronos and it doesn't look like anything is happening for me. But I am okay because I know that my life is lived before an audience of one. So God is looking at my behavior, is looking and He rewards good behavior. So I'm, He's looking at how I handle people. He's finding out how I deal with the, those that, that, that don't see anything. When, when the Christians aren't around and you are dealing with people in the street. I got this thing happening in my house where um, the guys that collect your dirt every, every for us it's Thursday. They, when I hear that, that machine, that truck coming down, I know they're waiting in the street for me. And this guy would go, he'd take my bins and then put it in, into the truck. The truck goes by, then he's having to rearrange all the bins. So every, all the bins go into one spot. Everybody gets their bins. For me, he takes my bins, he brings them right to my gate. Pastor, God bless you. Because he knows I get up from there, here's your money for the week, put a couple of hundred in his hand, God bless you son, on your way. That's got nothing to do with my church service on a Sunday morning. Because God is rewarding good behavior, everything about your life, everything you do in the morning, how you treat people, how you handle your situation. God is looking how you deal with life every single day, not only on a Sunday. Are you hearing me? This is not a Kairos moment. This is nothing special. This is just Thursday morning and this man is waiting because hey, hey, pastor's here. And everybody in the street have their bins laid one side, but mine is by my door. And if I open up that gate, he runs all the way with the bins, pulls them into my yard and say, I love you, sir. I say, I love you, son. Keep on going. We love you. Come on, somebody. Are you hearing me today? Because in Kronos, God is watching everything that you do. He rewards every moment. How you treat your domestic worker, how you treat somebody who, you, who will never bless you. God is looking at everything. It's called Kronos. Everybody likes a Kairos moment. A Kairos moment is when God brings heaven and earth and everything changes. And we all want to hear about how that person got their house and how that one got their breakthrough and tell me how your, your car came through and how did that job opportunity come for you? Because Kairos is when there's a, a normal day of events and it is just, it looks like an ordinary day. But it's like, the, the word is convergence because diverge is to move away from. Converge is like two rivers coming together to create a greater flow. So it's almost as, as, if, as if your faithfulness meets with God's faithfulness and God begins to merge the two. And all of a sudden, there's a greater flow. Come on, somebody. You're going to get excited about this message. You're going to understand the power of what I'm saying. Because God watches everything that you do in time, in your... He's watching everything in your Kronos time because Kairos only comes from Him. So a Kairos moment that God creates, if you don't learn to live by these two, there's a third one I want to speak about. I can't get into, into, into it today. My time's already gone. But I want you to understand that there is something else. It's called the fullness of time. So let me give you a quick example to put you in on the picture. Take a woman. The great news we just heard. She's pregnant. But she's got to stay in time. For nine months. And then all of a sudden, the baby's going to help you. Water breaks. A Kairos moment is created. That Kairos moment is very difficult. Everybody's, everybody's running around. Everybody's focused. The guy has his Man United top on all of a sudden. He's got to behave like a king. Not like a crazy nut. Running around like the devil. He's got to behave. Because now you're going to put it in that car. Now we're going to put all this. We prepared for this moment. 
And now the doctors and the nurses, and everybody comes to the attention of the moment. Because it's a Kairos moment. And of course, she's screaming and looking all ugly because her nose is big and, you know, she's screaming and crying. Oh, Jesus, I just lost the whole audience there. Just like, you forgive me. She gets on that moment, she's swearing the husband. No, I know not you. I mean, you're born again and you're not like Aaron. It's your fault. Okay. But everybody's paying attention because this baby and the timing has got to come out. When she goes home with the baby in her hand, we call that the fullness of time. When she carries away what was promised, it's called the fullness of time. I have a Greek word for you. I'm not getting into that. It's actually called pleru, fullness. P-L-E-R-O-O. It means to fill up. It means to make full, to fill to the brim, to bring into realization. It is the completion or fruition of a thing. It is the fullness of time. Galatians 4 and 4, please. I want you to understand as a born-again believer that these times belong to you. Now, all God's doing in, this, in the earth is working through every one of them. I don't know what you're working on. I don't know what clock you're keeping. But when you are dealing with God and you are understanding that you are born again and that God is the one who creates the kairos. I'd like to tell you that kairos comes to everybody. It doesn't. It's like rewarding a thief just because he's living. God's no fool. So everything that I do in my, how I respond to people, how I treat God's people, how I could handle a double garage at home and the few people that were there. I had a worship leader that had a guitar. Because I was playing CDs. He says, why do you play CDs? I play guitar. I'm like, that's an awesome idea for all 12 of us in service. And so he comes and he plays the guitar. And he's really, you know, those are the songs he could play. And we went with it. And when I start to preach, he falls asleep in the front row. I prepared a sermon. And I preached like I'm preparing for 10,000 people. For 12 people. And sometimes, once head dryer is gone, can't make it to church. I get all those SMSs. I know exactly who's in church because my head dryer is gone. The dog's got in, you know, there's issues, the cat, da 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 da. And we know it's all six of us in service. Christmas morning, my family and one person, my first Christmas service. And the Lord was asking me, Will you be faithful? Because God sees what you do in time. I'm talking about not your Kairos moment. We can all jump and scream and, Woo, well done. I see the new car that's here. God, God's river doesn't flow with people that are unfaithful. A faithful God doesn't run with unfaithful people. I don't care where you flow into and what you want to do. Until you stay faithful to God, there comes a moment David is writing Psalm 23 by himself. He doesn't even know that this 40 days, Goliath is screaming and swearing and cursing God's people. He's just faithful. He's anointed as king. He knows he's got the call. But he's faithful because when he got anointed, he went back to shoveling sheep down. And he looked after the sheep and he was faithful in his assignment. Because Kronos matters for Kairos. David, if you read Psalm 17, uh, 1 Samuel 17, David is just, he's serving. Then his father commands him to go and serve his brothers. 
He comes with the cheese. He comes with the bread. And he looks at this thing. He says, but what the hell's going on here? No, no, Goliath is here. He's cursing all God's people. It's been 40 days. David never knew about it. He didn't go looking for a Goliath. He was faithful in the Kronos time. Little did he know, on that day, his Kronos was going to converge with a Kairos moment with God. God orchestrated it. David says, what do I get if I take his head off? Dead free living. He gets the woman. He gets doors open to the next level. Because when you understand how to handle Kronos, your Kairos moment is easy. You don't make up a Kairos moment. God orchestrates it. But he's looking for the faithful. That when the faithful meets with the faithful God and that thing converges, it's what you call a Kairos moment. You can't say you want what the Apostle Max got. You first have to understand what the Apostle Max did. Do you know how many times I wanted to walk away from my marriage? Well, not so many, but there were times. But to remain faithful, the Lord said to me, Son, if you stay faithful here, I'm going to meet you down the road, son. And I'll turn this, this thing, it's a struggle right now, I'll turn into a Kairos moment, and I will make sure that you go and live in the best, you'll experience the best, you'll have heaven on earth in your marriage. But you have to be faithful. That's the reason why Tithing is not so much about God trying to get something from you. It's just can you sow in the midst of not knowing what's going on. If you're ever going to come into what God has got for you, then the Skyros and Kronos moments you must understand. You remember Peter? They know just, he's just fishing. Jesus throws in, says, give me your boat, preaches from the boat, then says, cast your net on the other side. Then he brings in this, this catch. He says, now I'll make you fishers of men. He follows him. He says, wherever I am, that's what he says in John chapter 12. Wherever I am, that's where you'll be. You need to understand how I work. You need to understand how my timing works in the earth. This is the reason why I never stayed here waiting for a hundred. And Jesus could stay on the cross if he wanted it for a hundred years. He gave up the ghost. Because he understood how to work with times and seasons. When it was, you don't hear about him from 12 to 30 in time. Just Kronos. Boom, here comes this moment, this Kairos moment. He's now baptized, his ministry starts. But let's go back. So he's got three and a half years of time again, but he's going to hit another Kairos moment because here comes the cross. Now, if you learn how to work with the rhythm of God, you will never miss God. The watchers will work with you. You're not an ordinary person. I, is somebody with me? You can't be dealing with your job like the person that's not a believer in that same job. You're not on their timetable. You are on assignment. Oh God, help us preach this thing this morning. You are not like everybody else. Come on, somebody. Just shake that rubbish off. You are operating on a different timetable. You've got angels assigned to you. You are, you are dealing with watches in your environment that must bring you into your destiny. You have a date with destiny. There's a reason for your existence. There's more to your life than what you're experiencing right now. Please shout amen. Peter goes... Follows Jesus. He messes up. Denies the Christ. Walks away. Jesus, after the resurrection, meets him. In fact, at, when he was resurrected, he says, Go and tell my disciples I'm alive and Peter. Because I need to bring him out of Kronos. He's gone back into the world's time. And yet I have a different time for him. Peter goes back fishing. The others are following him. Like what I know to do in the way I did life, I'm going back. Jesus goes and meets him there. Pulls him and says, Peter, do you love me? Feed my sheep. 
He takes him where Peter was going to let go of the timing of God. He brings him back into the, into the time of God. Like watchers would do. And say, this must happen now. And Peter in his denial and, and, and being Simon the Reed, his name is changed. He says, you're Peter and on this rock I'm going to build my church. It's a promise I made to you. So this thing must come to pass. And it was days after that. Jesus stays on the earth for 40 days. Preaches the kingdom. 10 days wait. Here comes the Holy Ghost. Day of Pentecost. Peter's the first one. He takes the mic. He preaches. 3,000 souls get saved. Because God pulls him into his time. While Peter's going back to an ordinary job and living like everybody else, God says, I'm pulling you back into this place. Please give me Galatians chapter 6 and verse 9. Give it to me in the New Living Translation, NLT version. Galatians 6 and 9. Do you have it? Want to read? So let us not get tired of doing what is good at just the proper time. We will reap a harvest of blessing if we don't give up. Give it to me in the New King James Version. Let us not grow weary while doing good, for in due season, in the proper time, we shall reap if we do not lose heart. So what happens is that you come into the kingdom of God and all God's moving you is between a time and a season. Between Kronos and Kairos. That's all God's doing. Why? Because hope deferred makes the heart sick. Why are so many Christians not getting the thing that God promised them? Because everybody wants the breakthrough over here. But doesn't like, none of us likes this, this place over here. Nobody's saying amen. Nobody's greeting me. Nobody's even, I'm just keep on doing stuff and nobody's even acknowledging me. That's why you can't walk around in the kingdom of God being so sensitive. I get so emotional, baby. You can't live in the kingdom with that emotions. That emotions will take you out of time all the time. And take you out of the rhythm with God. And so now you say, oh, now please come back. And now, now I feel like going back to church now. What? Did you not know that there was a Kairos moment assigned for you? I feel that there is a moment for somebody here this morning. That God's about to break through your darkness. I would not be preaching a message like this if there wasn't faith in me that someone's about to have a convergence in their lives that God is about to deliver to you something that you've been waiting for for a very long time. Nobody has seen you. Nobody's acknowledged you. Nobody's seen the pain and the hurt. But I believe that there is a moment in time that God is about to create. I've only come as a prophet of God to make an announcement in the heavenlies. I feel that there is a Kairos moment the watchers are working and they're bringing to pass uh, that which God has promised. Uh, I need a church or somebody who believes what this prophet would tell you that this is my time. The set time of favor has come. Yes, my set time. God, when he sets the time, uh, the watchers are involved. Uh, the angels are involved. Uh, the people of God, uh, doesn't matter who doesn't like you, doesn't matter who said no, uh, nobody said you, you, they said you don't qualify but I'm letting you know that when the watchers are at work they've come with God's calendar they've come with God's agenda they've come with God's timetable they've come with God's watch the angels are going to move over your business deals right now you need to pull that trigger I believe that the season is now that things are going to happen so fast it's going to make your head spin I'm letting you know that God has orchestrated a Kairos moment for you and your family you've been faithful in time here comes the blessing of the Lord you've been sowing and nothing's been happening but I'm letting you know that there is a moment in time after you prayed and after you've suffered a while there is a moment when God sends the angels and they saying the time is now come on somebody this is being done in its proper time they said you're never gonna get married here comes your husband 
here comes your wife. They said you're never going to have a baby. Here comes the babies. You're never going to own anything. You're just going to be like your father. The devil is a liar. I got a Kairos moment and I'm going to carry away the thing that belongs to me and my household. I'm letting you know that there's a shift taking place in the heavenlies. I'm letting you know the power of God is in this place. I'm going to preach this thing because a child has been sitting there. One of our girls been hovering around and saying, God, when is my time? I've come to announce it in the heavenlies. Everybody shout Kairos! Give me the book of Acts. I think it's seven. Don't bring the worship team. Let's end this. I think it's Acts chapter 7 or uh, Acts chapter, yes, Acts chapter 10 verse 4. Everybody, you think I spring you on a Saturday morning is not noted in the heavenlies. You can't come visit here. We live here. We faithful here. If I'm not preaching out, I'm not out of the country, Saturday morning I'm here. I don't lay in bed. Because I am, I need to be faithful even in my prayers. Nothing's happening. We haven't seen the breakthroughs yet. I'm not even coming here just to say, well, you know, if God does this for me, then I'll do it. And when he observed him, he was afraid and said, what is it, Lord? Go back one. Go back to verse one. Give you the context. There was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius a centurion of what was called the Italian regiment. A devout man and one who feared God with all his household, who gave alms generously to the poor, to the people, and prayed to God always. He doesn't even know who he's praying to. He doesn't even know God. All he's been doing is being faithful. About the ninth hour of the day, he saw clearly in a vision an angel of God coming in and saying to him, Cornelius, a watcher. And when he observed him, he was afraid and said, what is it, Lord? So he said to him, your prayers and your arms have come up for a memorial before God. Man, I need a demonstration of something here. There comes a day that you've been faithful you've been faithful sowing, serving, praying then God says here's your kairos calls the memorial means that all that you've done has come before God and God's about to turn this thing on somebody's head I don't know what you've done and what you've been involved in. I've never seen you give. I didn't know what it was you're serving. I just come up here to preach. And often I don't see you the servants of God. Your praying, your intercession, your faithfulness. But I'm letting you know that God is about to turn this thing for your family. I just need a believer to come and come in agreement with the Lord right now. If I be a prophet and your man of God, I'm letting you know the watchers are working. I have a word from the Lord. The Lord woke me up this morning. He said, the watchers are working. I know what watchers are. I know when God set the clock for your blessing. I know when God has set things and put things in place, that the dreams that you had will come to pass. The things that are set in place for change, kingdom life embassy, families and homes, things you've been trusting and waiting and asking God for. I'm letting you know, it's not even your faith at this level. It's not so much about your faith. It's about God's timing of something that must be done in its time. It is critical that certain things be done. Why? Because if you don't heal certain people at a certain place, it's not just 
I got touched with, with Bell's palsy, is that if God didn't heal me in nine days, it would affect everybody in this place. I'm watching pastors crying because of the last pandemic. Their wives standing by themselves preaching. Because there's certain things that must take place in certain times, lest it affects the next generation. Do you understand that your breakthrough must come now for your children? Do you understand that? Do you understand that that house must manifest now for the sake of your children? Is everybody with me? Do you understand that God would not leave a generation in a mess? He's going to dispatch angels to make sure it comes to pass. If nobody else wants to believe, if I can find a believer in this place, God will do it for you and your household, not even for you. Because there's a generation coming by that's going to affect their faith. God has got to do this. Oh, please lift your hands. Just stand to your feet and lift your hands. We are here for you. Come and do what you do. We are here for you. Come and do. This word has been released. I'm declaring right now a kindest moment for every family right now. I'm declaring and decreeing right now. You're coming into your God a day in moment right now where the glory of God will be seen upon you in the mighty name of Jesus. I thank you, Father God, that every agenda of the enemy, every thought that has not emanated from the throne room of heaven is falling to the ground right now. But what is of God right now? I decree and declare now your ears open to hear the voice of God. Your your heart now aligned with kingdom purpose and destiny for your life and for your family in the mighty name of Jesus. Come on, decree and declare out of your own mouth. I am in my Kairos moment right now. I am walking in tandem with the power and the spirit of God. I thank you right now that there's an open heaven over my life, over my family, over my destiny right now. I pull you into your God-given purpose right now. In the mighty name of Jesus, come on, decree and declare. I'm walking in the very purpose of God for my life in Jesus' mighty name. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pull you in Jesus' mighty name. Coming to your divine purpose. Coming to the glory that God has for you. Manifest the glory of God. Manifest the kingdom of God. In the mighty name of Jesus, it is a supernatural move. It is a God move right now. A God move right now. It is a move. Come on, declare it. It is a God move. It is a timeless movement. In the mighty name of Jesus, there will be no more delays over your life, over your destiny, over your business. It is a move of God to divinely align you with kingdom purpose and destiny for your life. 
in the mighty name of Jesus. God released this word for you today to understand that He's doing something in the earth and He's raised up a people who will believe the word of God and declare that I am in my Kairos moment right now. I am in my God-given destiny and purpose now will manifest in and through my life, in and through my family in and through my business in the mighty name of Jesus. Now give God a praise and a shout. Hallelujah, glory. I just want to, when, when you're praying, you're aligning your spirit. You're aligning everything with your life and saying, Father, this is one year I'm not missing what you have for me. This is not about Easter eggs and bunnies. This is about God's timing in the earth that, of things that must take place. And I tell you something, what does a, a Kairos moment look like? It looks like trouble. It's like trouble everywhere around you. Jesus said, can't you pray with me for one hour in my Kairos moment? I'm giving birth to the next level. I pray for peace in your home. I pray that you begin to understand that you are dealing with a Kairos moment in your life. That you cannot be distracted in the season. You must get focused, the Lord said. You must get focused, you and your family. Because this is one year. You're not going to abort what belongs to you. You are coming into what God has provided and set up. Listen to me, God's taken a whole year to bring you to this moment. God set up all that for this moment. So that you can walk through this. Lift your hands and call for grace right now. Father, I pray for every household right now. There are business deals on the table. There are things that are promised for God's people. There are relationships and marriages and breakthroughs. My God, I thank you. Lift up your family surname right now. Lift up your family name and call upon the name of the Lord and say there's a Kairos moment. Everybody online say there's a Kairos moment for the Holland household. Call your family and say, Father, I thank you that you set up this moment but I will never miss uh, what you have for me and my family I thank you for your mercy in the many times I was unfaithful and I never followed through but I'm asking you to teach me how to walk like the sons of Issachar who understood the times and the seasons and what Israel ought to do teach my family what to do teach me what to do in a season like this I know that you've sent the watchers I know that the angels are busy right now I thank you my God for the, uh, my deliverance uh, My family will never be the same again I'm going to take my moment with you And I know we will never be the same again We're going to take our Kairos moment uh, There will be the fullness of time Where my children will experience uh, The blessing of the Lord uh, Where my marriage and my home And my future will be secured uh, There is a Kairos moment I want to pray this uh, Let's pierce the heavenlies uh, Let's pierce the darkness Let's pierce that womb right now. Let there be a watershed moment. Let there be a moment in the heavenlies. Let the water break. Let that baby come. Let that promise be delivered. Let this be the season. Hallelujah. It's in its proper time. Yes. Yes, Alistair. It's in its proper time. Stay focused, says the Lord. It's in your season, son. You are stepping into what God has got for you. I am letting you know the blessing of the Lord is upon you to make you rich and add no sorrow. I'm walking in the timing of the Lord. Decree and declare that over your home right now. I'm walking in the timing of the Lord. I'm walking in tandem with the Lord. Tell the Lord right now, order my steps according to your word. Let me be found at the right place, at the right time, with the right people. I thank you that you're the God of order, but I'm not missing this year. I'm going to walk into what you have for me. I want you to pray. Pray right now and say, Father, order my steps. Not my will be done, but let your will be done and let your kingdom come. Lift your hands one more time. In its proper time. Come on, lift your hands. In its proper time, decree and declare that. Over my home. My children will not miss the blessing. My household will not miss the blessing. This is my season. This is my time. My set time of favor is here.
teach me to do your will. Teach me to do your will. Teach me to stay faithful. Teach me to stay in the center of your will. Teach me to stay faithful to you. Give me power every hour to be true. I want to run with you, God. Please hear me, church. You need to get the timing of God, even the rhythm of who God is and what He's doing. A premature baby brings all kinds of problems. An overdue baby, they know they can't leave it too long because it creates all kinds of problems in the womb. The baby is overdue. Listen to me, every trouble you go through has got an expiry date. There must be. I need to see God move in my life. And God is no respecter of persons. What He's done for Shammai and what He's doing for her family and how they're all believing. They might not be fully there yet, but they're going to turn their eyes and sing, but there is a God. God must do it. Whether your name is Michaela or whether you're a business person, it must come forth into its fullness because people are watching but there is a God David said let them know that there's a God in Israel God must do it for you now I said that breakthrough is going to come for you I said now your Kairos moment is going to be now Come on, somebody. Help me. That baby must come out now. That thing that God has promised, it must happen now. I can't delay another year. That spirit of delay must be removed. The power of God in this place. I feel an anointing to break yokes. The power of God is in this place. There is an anointing. That breakthrough must be now. It must be for your family. It must be now. It's going to move your faith. It must be now. This is the season. This is my time. The time is now. Everybody shout, the time is now. That baby cannot be delayed anymore. That contract must manifest now into your bank account and all that God has promised for the sake of my generation. pray and agree with me the campus the second campus must manifest now there's a generation go and tell the owner the Lord is in need of it they must lose it and let it go in the name of Jesus because we are in need of it Things must happen in its proper time. 